We're changing things again. Are we dumping our homeschool curriculum? I'll tell you all about it coming right up. I'm gonna start out this video by reading a little paragraph from Teaching from Rest by Sarah McKenzie. A stack of books, hours of reading, poetry, long walks outside, bike rides, spelling words, visits to the orchards, singing, sitting for hours with toddlers on laps, flipping through picture books, singing silly rhymes, algebra problems, library visits, outings, winter evenings spent huddled around a board game or listening to a story, phonics, handiwork, a five paragraph essay, baking soda and vinegar volcanoes, map work, drawing, music, conversations about everything under the sun, a garden, a grammar page, a memorized fact, a meal eaten with grandparents, a camping trip in August. Live your life, relish ideas, wrestle, remember, think and converse. That is a curriculum you cannot buy, but your child's heart and mind will feast on it for years to come. Hey guys, Vani from Mrs. Mom's Homeschool. If you're new here, I make videos to help you on this homeschooling journey. And today I wanna to talk about the fact that we are dumping a lot of our homeschool curriculum just for the year. I'm not dumping it forever and it's not because I don't like it, but if you watch the video that I posted right before this one, oh, I just gotta chill. <laughs> if you watch the video that I posted right before this one, you'll see that we are moving and there's big life changes happening with that move. Well, the fact that we're moving <laughs> is a big life change. And so I need to eliminate as much stress as I can from my life and from the kids' lives by making some changes in our homeschool. When just when I thought I had my schedule all down packed, everything changes again. That's life, right? Okay, so anyway, we're gonna get into how I'm changing things for each of my kids without curriculum for the most part and how we're still gonna be learning. But I think this is gonna be a, a time where the kids are gonna be learning to love that learning process, to be more engaged in their lessons. That is my whole goal. It's not even about you know the move or anything. It's really to get my kids back to that level of learning so they're not dreading doing school every day. Because right now they're dreading it. They're dreading the textbooks. They're dreading the, the videos. They're you know like the, the lessons. They're dreading the workbook pages. They're dreading all of that stuff. And it's not joyful for them and it's not joyful for me. And I realize that it's, it's time to change some things. So we're gonna start off with my third grader who's eight years old and what we're gonna be doing for her. Now the one thing that we are not changing is math. We are sticking with our math curriculum and I use the good and the beautiful for my seventh grader and for my third grader. Another thing we're going to be sticking with for my third grader are the good and the beautiful science units because she loves it. We have a great time, we learn a lot, it's a lot of fun, it's hands-on, and it's very enjoyable for us. So we're gonna to continue to do that as well. So now let's jump into how we're gonna be doing our language arts. So we were doing the good and the beautiful language arts, which we will pick back up on, it's just not the time for that right now which if you're new to it, it covers grammar and spelling and vocabulary and geography and writing and poetry memorization and uh, picture study. So that's seven subjects that now I have to figure out on my own. Or do I? Let's take a look. For starters, I created my own lesson planner. I couldn't find anything that suited my needs. So I do have these principles for free at my Teachers Pay Teachers website in the description below. But if you see here, every month we are going to be picking a Bible theme of things that we want, I want to instill in, the, in her, and uh, we're, we're doing one kid at a time. So in my daughter, I want to instill certain character traits, and for that we're gonna be using laying down the rails, and we're gonna be picking different character traits depending on what their needs are, what I see that they need to work on, and we're gonna work on that together. That's how we're gonna do Bible. For Bible, we're also gonna be using theology every morning, doing a devotional, and then doing the character traits, looking up some verses, memory verses, and just keeping it simple. Every month, she's also going to be reading a book, and but with that book, we are going to be doing literature activities that I find online. So the first unit that I purchased was for Charlotte's Web, which is what she's reading right now, and off of Confessions of a Homeschooler's website, they had up this beautiful Charlotte Web lap book and activity guide. So in this literature study, she's gonna be every day doing something 
to learn more about the book. This is how we're doing our language arts. In here, there are vocabulary words that she will have to look up and write down, which includes writing. There's questions about the book, like predict where the story takes place, draw cover for the story. She'll be learning to write a timeline of events that happen in the book. She's going to write facts about the author, the illustrations, the story, the characters, the setting. And through all of this learning, she's going to put together a lap book to save all of the things that she's learned in here. So this is going to cover her writing, some, some science in reality, in reality, some science, some writing, vocabulary, and spelling. I will be continuing to give her spelling. The way we do spelling, check out that video in the card above through the good and the beautiful spelling list so that she can stay on track with that. She'll be getting spelling words that I'll have her use to write down in here to give her that practice. So that is how we're doing language arts for my third grader. I feel like it's going to be so much more fun for her. We're going to sit together and read the book, cuddle up together, make this lap book, put it together, put some music on and just have fun learning. Also for my daughter, we're going to be doing poetry tea time where she's going to be listening to poetry and writing her own poetry. We're also going to be going outside a lot more. And with that, you get tons of nature study and tons of science going outside and just observing things. Because since my kids were little, I've always taught them to observe things in nature observe the leaves, the trees, the insects, and then we talk about those things because that's how we did science when they were little. So we're going to go back to the basics and make sure that we do that when we are playing outdoors. And I'm going to be tracking their outside time as well. It's so important for kids to play outside and my kids don't ever. So we're definitely going to do a lot more of that. We're also going to be working on her American Heritage Girls girl badges, which there's some in science, history, Bible, all the different topics. So as you're earning a badge, you're learning about so many things and trying new skills, and that's going to be fun in, it, in itself. This is the simple way that I'm going to be homeschooling my third grader for this year. So she's going to have math, vocabulary, spelling, reading, writing, read out louds, character study, nature study, science, and a sprinkle of a little bit of everything with those badges, all while having fun, being happy, being a kid, having some joy and some fun. Now let's move on to my seventh grader. In the previous videos, I talked about how at this age, you know, you got to get them into the, the textbooks and it's not much fun because you want to prepare them for high school. But I kind of disagree with my own opinion about that now. He's 12 years old. He's still a child. He still likes to have fun. So I'm not going to be forcing him to do things that he hates because he's not learning. When your child hates a subject, they're not learning it. They're doing it to pass the time. They might be writing out the everything, but nothing is sticking because they don't care about it. They're doing it to please you or to please the teacher if they were in school. So I decided to take a break from all of his curriculum, like except for math, everything else, his science, his apology of science, his good and the beautiful language arts, his IEW writing, and his history curriculum. It's all getting put on the shelf for later. Let me show you how we are gonna do school for my seventh grader. For my seventh grader, we're doing something similar with his read out loud time prep. I mean, but not his read, his read alone time. We are right now, he's reading The Outsiders. And I also got a literature pack for him from Teachers Pay Teacher. But this one is really cool. Well, the other one was really cool too, but this one's really exciting as well because there's so many like fun activities in there. I saw a lot of literature packs that had a lot of writing, you know, just like boring stuff, but this one is not like that. Let me read to you some of the activities. One of them is a night at the drive-in. They're going to be assigned the role of either Soch or Greaser. Well, he, that day, because I don't have a classroom full of seventh graders. I'm going to set up the room like a drive through theater. I'm going to give him some movie titles and messages that go along with the movie. And he's going to write down how the greasers and socias would be, would feel about the movies. And the purpose of this activity is to talk about the different perspectives with this activity. We're going to be making posters talking about stereotypes. What does it mean to stereotype people? Are stereotypes true? Are they good? Are they bad? We're going to be going through Robert Frost's poem. Nothing gold can stay and dissecting it line by line possibly even memorizing it. He's going to be doing interviews and making a wanted poster, but he's also going to be writing down vocabulary for each chapter and their definitions. And so with this, he's going to be really diving into the book, the story, the characters, the setting and the vocabulary, learning new vocabulary, going over his spelling. And we're going to be going over his grammar at the same time. So I forgot to mention what we're also going to be doing for grammar for my third grader is we are going to be adding some Mad Libs in there. We have some grammar games. 
We're gonna keep it fun. Now for my son, I do have a book on paragraph editing and every so often I am going to have him edit a paragraph so he doesn't forget what he's learned from The Good and the Beautiful. So we, he will be editing a paragraph. But any writing activities, essays, all that stuff, we're not doing that right now. We're, writing activities are gonna come from writing newspaper articles about his book, posters, brochures, different things like that that's fun and interesting and that's gonna capture his imagination. For science right now, I got this book from the library. It is a book of science experiments, science fair projects. We already started one with our history actually. So we'll talk about history really quick. We're doing the read out loud from America's history from the Tuttle Twins. And they're just sitting back, they're listening to the story and that has a lot of fun activities in it. So one of the activities in it was preserving tomatoes in five different things, salt, vinegar, water, leaving it alone and leaving it there for two weeks. So they're getting pretty gross. Some of them are getting pretty gross right now, but we incorporated science with that history lesson, which is cool. So we're gonna continue with that history, the Tuttle Twins history, and they have online a whole bunch of different activities and videos and things like that to make history engaging. Also for history, I also found on, Net on Amazon some American history videos that we're gonna be watching as well, just for him to learn about the events in history, and then we'll discuss them after. So going back into science, Right now, we're learning about the scientific method, so what better way to learn about the scientific method than doing experiments? So we're gonna be writing lab reports for diff different experiments, and when we're done that, he's gonna jump back into the good and the beautiful sciences with my daughter, and I'm just gonna do a lot of extension work with him, but it makes it easier to do one subject for the both of them, for history and science. We are working on this handwriting. That's something that's an ongoing thing that needs to be worked on, but I did get a brand new, handwriting book for him. He's having trouble with his handwriting. Some kids just have trouble with their handwriting. I guess I've been trying to do a lot of research. So we're gonna go ahead and check out this book and see how it works for him. We're also going to be, we're not completely tossing his Bible curriculum, but I'm not gonna have him do all the writing. We are gonna read through the lessons because they're really good, um, but we're gonna be discussing the answers to the questions. That'll give us some nice one-on-one -on -one time to have conversations, talk about his friends, talk about choices, talk about having godly wisdom and becoming a godly man. So we are gonna continue with that Bible curriculum loosely. He's also gonna get a lot of outside time and we're gonna be playing more games and watching movies and things like that. So I'm excited to share um, a day in the life video with you. We just have to get back on track first. Today is Sunday when I'm shooting this. Tomorrow we are first day back to school after another week off because, you know, things happen. So I'm gonna end this video with another paragraph from Homeschooling from Breast by Sarah McKenzie. Yes, we want a wide and generous education for our children. We want them to have a broad understanding of the big, beautiful world, of the tragic failures and glorious breakthroughs in history, the lyrical beauty of prose and poetry, the order and art of mathematics. But as Dr. Christopher Prerin has taught me through the Latin maxim, I'm not gonna read that in Latin, but it means true breath is achieved through depth. Our children get a broad education when they go deep into a few carefully selected subjects, not when they dabble in 10. I hope that this video motivated you guys. If you were struggling or maybe think outside the box a little bit, if you're doing school at home, remember why you started homeschooling in the first place. Enjoy your kids, enjoy your life, enjoy your homeschool, let your kids enjoy their lives and make sure you follow me for more. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.